Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Um, so I wanted to do another standard event today, kind of in response to one of my viewers um, who asked for a standard event for the Mono White Humans deck. So I'm really excited to try it out and sort of see how it does. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised with the Mono Red version that I did the other day that ended up going, um, well, if you haven't seen it, it did very well, but definitely feel free to check out the video. Um, and for my new viewers here, anyone stopping by, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing my channel with a friend of yours. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. You guys are the lifeblood and the backbone of the channel, so I really do value you very highly. Um, one other note, the deck list here will be in the description of the video, both on moxfield.com and untapped.gg. And then I will also have a link to several of my different playlists, both the Road to Rank 1 with Mono White Humans list, um, standard events, my collab drafts with Ace MTG, and uh, maybe also the qualifier weekend for the last uh, standard qualifier weekend. So yeah, feel free to check them out if you like my stuff. Okay. Um, I do want to give a shout out here again to my first uh, member on the channel, Kibo. Thank you so much again for your support. Um, if anyone else would like to become a member, you are going to get free access to, um, or early access to my videos, as well as a shout out here on my channel. And it really is a great way to help support me and my channel. So um, if that's something you'd like to do, here's how you do it. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So this is the most recent version of the Mono White Humans list, which I've taken up to about the top 600 Mythic. And I've been really happy with it, especially happy with the change to add back in a full play set of the Intrepid Adversary. Um, this card in tandem with the Lunark Veterans has just been amazing. There's been a ton of mono red, Boros aggro, and it's just, it seems really important to have access to as much lifelink as possible. In addition, um, yeah, March of Otherworldly Light has just taken this deck to a whole new level, and it has been amazing. So, yeah, full play set here. The addition of Skrelv I really like. It, it helps a lot to protect the full play set of Brutal Cathars that we have, and just kind of add another layer that Mono Red has to deal with, um, or other decks that have removal. And the also the play set of Brutal Cathars and Recruitment Officers work together very well, just as in kind of the old version of Mono White Humans sort of from several months back, so it's been great. Um, I do like the one copy of Lava Spur Boots, there definitely have been times it's been sort of okay, and there's times that it's been really great. It really shines against blue-white control, but I haven't seen a lot of that deck recently. So I think it still definitely has its place, but this is just something to kind of think about sort of going forward. Everything else I think fits really well. I really like the mana base, the four Iganjos, the three Mishra's Foundries. Um, all the creatures I think really deserve their place. I really like you know, three copies of Thalia. I think it's perfect. And uh, yeah, so I think the only card that I'm just sort of kind of wondering about is the Lava Spur Boots. You know, when it shines, it really shines. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the only kind of flex slot I guess I would have at the moment. So let's go ahead and jump in to a standard event. I hope everybody's been having a great week so far. And uh, yeah, it's been so much fun doing drafts and doing standard events and trying out new decks. And, um, you know, again, I'm just an aggro player, so I kind of gravitate to either mono white or mono red. But uh, yeah, 
a lot of really great stuff out there. So I'd be curious to hear from you guys, you know, what kind of decks you guys are trying out and liking. And yeah, anyways, let's jump in. I will say one of the nice things about the new mono red is just you can burn your opponent out of anywhere. And so that's something that you don't really have access to here in the mono white humans deck. You have to sort of fight for every inch. But um, this also has, I think, like a better long game, perhaps. So I do love this deck. And yeah, I've done most of the climbing into top 600 or so, or top 1,000 with this list. Okay, Demonic Ruckus, yeah, that's a card I've also seen quite a lot. So here, question is, do we want to go Veteran or Skrelv? I think it's just more important to get the life gain going. And yeah, so I could see an argument for either one, but I think I just want to get life gain going. Most likely we'll play the Skrelv the turn we go for Knight Errant. Okay, here I really like playing Thalia to help kind of tax what they're trying to do and just sort of slow them down a little bit. So I think this will make this cost one, yeah. So at least it's not free. <clears throat> and then depending on what they do, if they leave our creatures alone, we'll go for Night Errant next turn. Like Skrelvin and Night Errant feels pretty good. We might not have that choice, but I guess we'll see. Alright, so it's just going to be Skrelv plus Vanguard, um, and just try to set up here for Knight Errant. We could try to trade, but I really want to get these Knight Errants down. I just don't think it's worth trying to... I think we can just soak the damage here from all the life that we're gaining off Lunark Veteran. Okay, a little bit unfortunate. Um, however, we do have <clears throat> enough mana to go Knight Errant for one. We could also go Adversary here. But I think I'd rather get the Knight Errant down. We can try to find some more Lunark Veterans, and then our next turn is quite a bit stronger. So I think let's just go... Although I suppose we have the Skrell, we can protect this Adversary. But I think we're at high enough life that we can go for the Knight Errant play. Okay, we did pick up some more creatures here, but I think I really wanted to see another veteran. So I don't know if that was right. It's entirely possible we should have just gone for adversary there. Okay, Brutal Cathar is amazing here. So now we want to go Brutal Cathar on their Scoundrel, and then they will draw some cards. So I suppose the other option here is Brutal Cathar plus Officer. <clears throat> Take out the Slick Shot and then just try to set up like a double block on the Scoundrel with our Knight Errant. That actually might be the better play. Slick Shot is just incredibly dangerous, and especially if we're giving them cards by getting rid of the Demonic Ruckus. I don't feel great about that. Okay. 
So yeah, I think we just set up the double block here with Skrull backup and just really kind of slow the game down. Okay, now we can go for Officer plus Adversary and then set up the flip, which I really like. Okay, um, and let's attack, I guess, with both. This is a free attack. If they want to trade here, I'm fine with that. Yeah, now they're going to need, like, show off into, like, two pieces of burn to kill us. Yeah, especially when I was playing on ladder, like, not respecting the damage potential of the slick shot show off is just <laughs> potentially very, very dangerous. I definitely lost some games out of nowhere where they just ended up doing 8, 10, 12 damage with it. Okay, opening hand looks great. Selesnia Enchantments. Okay. So the question here is, do we want to get <clears throat> Brutal Cathar going? Do we want to get Adeline going? Do we want to get Knight Errant going? I think since we've got Copper Coat... Hmm... And Adeline will be attacking with Vigilance. I actually think we want to get Adeline going here. This way, next turn, like, after we attack, we can still do the Knight Errant play. We'll have extra creatures for it. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty nice. Actually, now we could we could march the borrowed time to get our Adeline back. We don't have to do that now, though. We could also just Brutal Cathar here. I kind of like actually just going Vanguard into Knight Errant here. Just set up a little bit. Could also push for six, but I just want to just get our board going. Yeah, and that feels really good. Kind of holding like the Brutal Cathar as like one of our last cards, I feel it's a little bit more powerful, especially since they could have more removal. So we could March and Thalia. 
If we want to pitch a card, we could just add a lean here, which feels really strong. We could Brutal Cathar and push. You know, we, we probably honestly just Brutal Cathar and push for eight. Since we've got the, the Copper Coat Shield, that feels pretty good. So this is probably just good enough. Yeah, that's going to do it. Two and oh. Okay, opening hand looks great. I think it's a lot easier to run out Skrelv on one here if we're not, you know, considering it or the um, Lunark Veteran. Okay, there we go. That works. So yeah, next turn, hoping to just play Adeline, keep pushing. I think whatever they attack with here, we're just ta you're just taking all, all of it, whatever it happens to be. That works. Yeah, this is a really great Adeline turn. We could do March later, which is nice. And then definitely leaving Skrelv up here to protect Adeline. should pretty much do it. Um, we don't even really need the Brutal Cathar, but we might as well. Yeah. That's basically it. They would need like, uh, and the festivities here would be really good for them. That should do it. Okay, three and oh.
Yeah, March has just been absolutely amazing. I love it so much in this deck. A little heavy on the Thalia here, but I'm happy to keep a two land. Let's offer the trade, see what they do. Sure. Well, so much for Intrepid Adversary. Interesting. Did not expect me to take one of our three Thalias. That was a really nice pickup. Do we want to just, <clears throat> I think we, let's, um, yeah, let's pump everybody. I'm not super worried about the Aganjo play here. Probably just holding, I guess, removal for Adeline. And if they want to kill Adversary instead, that's fine. Okay, that's a really nice pickup, especially if they have removal for our set, our first adversary. <clears throat> this helps kind of protect against that. Yeah, so now if they've got removal, I suppose they could... Yeah, I suppose they could just like go for the throat one of our adversaries, but then the blocks are bad. So I think we just, I think we just all in here. If they want to trade for one of our adversaries, that's fine. Lava Sprue Boots is a really nice pickup here. So they potentially could have, what could they have here? They could have Cut Down for Thalia. If we push all in here, we're pushing six, drop them to three. Hmm. We're not left with a whole lot, but we do have the boots, which is nice. 
So I'm not sure if we attack with adversary here. Trading it isn't great. But I like the damage that it rep represents. Yeah, I think we actually, we do all in here with the Lava Spur Boots. I do like this. Getting this thing off the field is also good. Especially now, if they kill Lothalia, we just get a new one, give it haste. Those who get in my way tend to regret it. So we could sack Dahlia here. That would open up cut down, which would be kind of annoying. Hmm. Decent chance we just draw a creature anyways, and this is also forcing lethal. I think since we've got the extra Thalia though, it's worth just sacking the Thalia here. Because now we've got force blocks on the Thalia. So now we can snipe off the uh, Liliana. Since this is first strike, they have to block Dahlia here, even if it's, even though they've got the lifelink. Fine. I know when I'm not wanted. And now if they kill this Dahlia, we just have a new replacement one. March should do it. So do we hold the Aganjo? I don't think so. I think we just want the extra point. And that should do it. So yeah, when, when Lava Spur Boots is good, it's really good. Really shines in like that matchup and control. Uh, 4 0. Spinning hand looks great. So 
So I wonder if this is the new Boros deck that um, I think was on Ash Lizzle's channel with like uh, the double strike guy and the slick shot. I think a couple uh, like lightning helixes. So yeah, double veteran here feels really good. I guess let's get the attack in first, just in case they've got nonsense. Not that it matters, but... interesting do we double block squee here we could double block squee or we could double block a swift spear if we double block squee they've got nothing else in their yards they don't, they're not getting it back anytime soon we still have a veteran to, to get to adeline going next turn but we do lose out on a bunch of the lifelink hmm I think I'm going to hedge here and just double block a Swift Spear instead. Eh, it's about the same. We could also just take it. Do they have witch stalkers is the real question. <clears throat> yep, I go, okay, they got witch stalkers. That's pretty brutal. Now I guess we could try to like, I guess we could try to race here. We could go veteran plus vanguard, push for six. I do kind of like that because like forces them to somewhat go on the back foot. Otherwise, we can just go Adversary here and again push for six. But I think Adversary is better next turn. Especially with our pain land, like, we're definitely causing them a lot of trouble. And if they want to slow down, we can just go for Night Errant, which feels really good. And especially since we're not attacking great on the ground, like, we can get Night Errant with all these ground pounders and then, like, push one in the air and just shut down their mana. Let's try that. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Another adversary, Adeline, feels really good too. Go Brutal Cathar here. I think Adversary... Actually, let's look. Hmm. Definitely want Adversary. 
I think probably just Adeline. Now we push for half their life total, they've got to have a flyer. Yeah, that's not going to do it. And now they can't even use their mana. Opening hand looks great. Again, here I'm going to go veteran over Skrelv. Hmm. But yeah, I think I do want to do that because we're just going to try to go for Night Errant the turn afterwards, so. I think I want the extra life. Okay, Brutal Cathar, hopefully we have time to get rid of this thing before we... I think it just do so much damage, it's absolutely insane. Yeah, even though we could go for Night Errant, like, since this thing is out on the table, like, we have to respect it, I think. And just go Brutal Cathar, get it off the table. Leave Skrelv back up. We're going to take some heat for it. <sighs> I suppose if we do go Night Errant, we have a decent blocker. Uh, maybe we should go Night Errant here. Thing is, this thing, this thing represents so much damage, it's absolutely insane. Probably taking minimum four or five next turn. Okay, so if we go Knight Errant, <clears throat> we can try to block. We'll take like three or four in the air. Yeah, I think maybe we have to go Knight Errant here as much as I hate it. Really hoping we would might see we might see some Lunark veterans. I don't know if this was right. We might just be dead to like another trick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was afraid of that. <sighs> so I guess, like, if we went for Brutal Cathar instead, they, they're still pushing an insane amount of damage. But maybe that was 
That might have been the better play, though. I think we just have to respect the slick shot. Okay, five and one. Yeah, looking back, I think we have to assume they've got like double pump or something like that. Maybe we like stabilize at like two or three if we do it the other way. Okay, there's Ruckus. I like Adversary, just getting it down. However, Copper Coat does protect Adeline on the following turn, which is nice. Helps push a little bit of damage. We're on the, we're on the play here. And we only need one more mana to go to get Adversary. I think I'm gonna go with Vanguard here for those reasons. But like it wouldn't be wrong going for adversary here either, especially against mono red. Okay, yeah, they've got the combo. So interesting question here is, we could potentially hold Iganjo for whatever nonsense they have coming next turn, because this will be an X three if they have like. What could they have? If they have like Monstrous Rage, it's an X4. I feel like they do try for it next turn. If we do Adeline, we're pushing an extra two damage this turn, they drop to 10. Next turn we have, we're essentially representing lethal. Yeah, I think Adeline is, hmm. Can they? Kill us on turn three. They go Slick Shot, Demonic Ruckus. This goes to four power. And then they have to have like a fling effect. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play it safe here. Just push for five. Just because I don't know how much they could potentially represent. Let's go to blockers. Okay, so they're gonna be Pushing 14, wow. Okay, we could march that for one mana. I think we drop Adversary in March. I think we just do it now just to save mana. This has got to be game. Yep. 
So yeah, <laughs> they could swing for 14. Wow. You have to disrespect the show off, I guess, if you've got the removal. Six and one. All right, opening hand looks great. Oh, it's this deck, the helping hand deck. Oh, never mind. This is the hulking metamorph reanimator combo thing. So I think the the thing here we want to make sure we can do Thalia really helps and then have March ready. I think the last time I faced, faced this deck I had March in response to their nonsense to win. So they could go for lockdown next turn, so I think we have to hold up March. Even though I want to play out my hand, it just is a little bit too risky. I guess we could play Officer here. Like, we still have enough to March, because if we March, pay the Thalia cost. Oh, never mind, we can't. We'd have to March for one, two, three, plus the Thalia, so we have to hold up everything. Now I think we march that end of turn and then hold up march again, probably. So if we Vanguard here, we don't have enough for Lockdown. I think they would have gone for it last turn if they had it though. So here we can march for one, two, four. I think that the magic number is five because they have some sort of, yeah, they, they bring back this somehow. And then if we can march that away, then we can win. Yeah, we don't have enough, unfortunately. So I think in light of that, I'm just gonna go for the copper coat play to try to shorten the game. They might just have it here, I hope not, but. Yeah, I was afraid of that. We needed one more mana to be able to march in response.
So they just go off on turn four then with Awakening. Yeah, okay, so I guess maybe the play there was like not even playing Thalia. It's hard to know. Thalia felt pretty good, but like having March in response also wins. All right, six and two, final boss. Yeah, like the trick there is like if you have enough mana up with March, you just march their guy in response to them going for the nonsense, then you win. Another reason why March is so good. <clears throat> But that is a cool combo deck. I don't know how consistent it is for turn four, but yeah, seems pretty strong. Hand looks good. So if they have another Slaughter Singer, they can hit us back with theirs. So I wonder if we if we hold Recruitment Officer here. The other reason is, I suppose if they have like the Annex, whatever it's called, the three mana one four guy, they can take our Vanguard and then push through for two. They are a faster clock than we are. Um, Not sure if we attack here, actually. I think we hold. Yeah, Annex Sentry. So even if they take Vanguard, we can still block. And now we just Brutal Cathar their Sentry, and then we can push. If they have another Sentry, it's rough. Could also Adeline here. Adeline doesn't feel as good. However, it does also set up a, a more powerful turn the following turn. Yeah, I think we Adeline here. Just Adeline and hold. The destroy evil was unfortunate, but yeah, now I think we're forced to go for it. Um, whoever holds the <laughs> Annex Sentry or Last Brukathar wins this fight, but I think we gotta do it. Otherwise, I guess we could just drop Thalia here, but they can keep pushing with the Sentry. So they're going to need another mana here in order to take our Brutal Cathar. I think we still hold back with Officer because we don't want to block with Vanguard if possible. This 
Especially if they have like mana into another century. Now we can Thalia plus crack a clue token and then hold up Foundry. We definitely want to try to outvalue them with Recruitment Officer if at all possible. So we could go Foundry, triple block their Sentry, get back our Copper Coat Vanguard. They'd be able to take out these two. I think Singer's a bit more dangerous though. We can double block Singer with Foundry. Probably Foundry and Thalia. Okay, now we've got Iganjo, which is really nice. So we set up another Thalia here. And again, swinging is just not great. But I think like, since we've got Iganjo, we can swing and then they can... Just attack with Sentry. Yeah. I think we can start swinging a little bit here. Yeah, the seed core is going to be nasty. God, I suppose if they use Skrelv on Sentry, then we can't even block it. But yeah, they use it there, that makes sense. Gonna need some answers here very soon. So if we crack the clue and we draw into either March or Brugal Cathar, we can use it while they're tapped out to get their Sentry or the Duelist. I mean, Skrelv is super annoying too because they can make Duelist double strike. Yeah, this is not looking good. Um, 
can try to search for Brutal Cathar. Don't know if we have time. Yeah, I think I think we do search actually. Okay, there's Brutal Cathar. They're probably gonna use Skrelv on Duelist. Um, yeah, so I guess we just push. So they're gonna hit us for two, four. We'll go to seven, we'll go to eight. Oof. Otherwise, we hold back Thalia and represent blocks on Sentry. I think we might have to do that so we don't... Well, all they need is like two attack steps with Duelist and we're dead. Yeah. This is not great. Plus, they can use Seed Core and Duelist right now to make it a... I suppose that doesn't really matter. So we've got to use Brutal Cathar to get the Defector Might. Yeah, unfortunately, I guess they can... Oh, because it's nighttime now... This is going to flip on their turn, and they can give this in response to losing their guy. Hexproof, we're just dead. Oh, that sucks. Actually, ah, oh, that was a mistake. I guess if we don't play a second spell, then we have a Moonrage Brute, and then they can't force through. Ah, oh, God, I just... <laughs> Okay, so what we were supposed to do there is sack the clue token and not play the Lava Spur Boots so this doesn't flip. Okay, yeah, that was a huge mistake. Oh well. Yeah, unfortunately this is going to do it. Because they just give Duelist Hexproof in response and we're dead. Yeah, so if we had not played Lava Spur Boots, we'd have a red creature and a white creature. We'd be able to block. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, we didn't get there. Six and three. So still pretty happy with the deck. Um, I think it is definitely very, very... There's a lot of like really tight spots. You've got to play really, really well which I don't always do, but um, it is a lot of fun, so I do recommend the deck. Let's get our prizes here. We still get, you know, some decent prizes, so it is a fun deck. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Really do appreciate it, and we will see you here for the next one.